Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Now, if there are any of you who weren't listening last night, here's how you can get a handsome aluminum flashlight, complete with bulb and batteries, with the compliments of the makers of Horlicks. A powerful little flashlight, scarcely larger than a fountain pen, which can be easily carried in a pocket. There are dozens of uses for this handy little flashlight. You could use it to help you find things in dark closets, in the basement, the attic, the garage. Think, too, what a lot of fun the children could have with one of these flashlights. Well, no matter what you want this flashlight for, here's how you can get it. Send in the wrapper from a package, any size package, of Horlick's malted milk powder. It must be Horlick's malted milk powder. Wrappers from Horlick's tablets are not eligible. Write your name and your address on the back of the wrapper, and enclose ten cents. That's to cover the cost of packing and mailing your flashlight. Mail your wrapper and dime to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. Then, you'll receive one of these fine aluminum flashlights, complete with bulb and batteries. Now send in for your flashlight right away, folks. Do it tonight. If you don't have a package of Horlicks in your home already, you can get it either natural or chocolate flavor at your druggist. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Lum and Abner received a letter yesterday from Mr. Horlick authorizing them to send one of their pocket flashlights as a gift to all their friends who will mail in a wrapper from a bottle of Horlick's malted milk. The old fellows are very enthused over the proposition and expect to raise enough funds in this way to restock their Jotham Down store. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at their empty store building discussing their new enterprise. Listen. Yeah, I know, but I, I don't believe I'd ordered so many of them flashlights, Lum. I don't believe we'll need half that many. Uh, don't you worry about that. We'll have that many requests in firm within the next day or two. Yeah, I hope so. Why, everybody will want one of these. It's the nicest little present I've ever seen. I was sitting here a while ago just thinking. There's something my body can find a thousand uses for. Men, women, and children. Oh, yeah, if they could see it. Well, I know they'd write in for one of them, Lum, but us just trying to tell them about it on a party line, why, it's hard to explain to them just what a nice present it is. Well, I told them it was a regular 75-cent flashlight. Yeah, but, Lum, you've got to see it to appreciate it. They've made so many improvements on them here late when you just say pocket flashlight, while a lot of folks has in mind them old style kind that a body might I be ashamed to carry. Well, next time I make an announcement over the party line, I'll tell them about how it looks like a fountain pen and how it's made out of polished aluminum so it'd be nice and light, and tell them all about it. Yeah. Well, now that you went ahead and ordered all these, well, we've got to get in some letters here some way. Well, look how many of our friends wrote in for Pine Ridge News we gave away a while back. This is way yonder nice better than that was. Oh, yeah, sure. I'd love to see all our friends get one, because I know how pleased they're going to be with it, yeah. Well, everybody I've showed it to has been tickled to death with it. Uh-huh. Said they's going to send in for one of them. <laughs> I was down at Moe's Moose Barbershop this morning. They's all trying to swap me out of this, and I got you. <laughs> all right, yonder some Cedric Weasel up out there front. Huh? Yeah. He's been trying to get me to patch up some troubles twixt him and his sweetheart. <laughs> They've had a sort of a falling out with one another. Well, I hope you don't try to talk him into having an automobile accident to get her back in a good humor with him like you did me. Don't you worry. I'll never try to talk nobody else into that thing again. After having to sit down here and wait on you hand and foot like I've been doing. Well, Lum, I can't wait on myself. Somebody's got to do it. And blame if I don't believe you're enjoying getting waited on this way. Well, I wouldn't say I'd enjoying it, but I'm getting a good rest out of it anyhow. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. Come in, Cedric. Uh, howdy, Cedric. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mr. Dick wanted me to bring his mail over to you fellas. S- said you was in a hurry for it. Oh, yeah, yeah. Much obliged, Cedric. I must be ordered for them flashlights now. Hey, Granny, is this all the mail he was, Cedric? Yes, sir, I reckon so. That's all Mr. Dick handed me. Well. well this ain't nice. I mean, he's just looking for her. Oh, I figured no. he'd have to bring the mail up here in a wheelbarrow this morning. Well, I uh, could have brung it over in a wheelbarrow, I reckon, but I never seen no use in it as long as I could carry it in one hand this way. <laughs> well, I'm just counting on restocking the store here out of these orders for flashlights. Why, the way we're starting out here, it'll take us all spring to fill up the candy case, much less the rest of the store. Yeah. Well, I better be getting back, I reckon. I've got some delivers to make. I- I'm working down there for Mr. Dick now, you know. Well, fine, Cedric. I'm glad to hear it. That's a good job for you. I wanted to tell you, Mr. Lum, that advice you give me worked out fine. <laughs> me and Gertrude Seastrunk's made up again now. <laughs> well, fine, Cedric. I'm glad to hear it. Yeah, Gertrude is a fine little girl. Fine little girl, Cedric. We're, we're going to get married for long, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad to see my advice has helped somebody anyway. 
Recollect, Cedric, I'm justice of the peace whenever you get ready to have an yeah, autopsy. Coming up, business. Yes, ma'am, I will. Well, I think I might as well get on back to the store. Well, much obliged for bringing the mail over, Cedric. Yeah, and if any more comes in down there, fetch it over first, Cedric. Yeah, bring it right over. Yes, ma'am, I will. How many we got there, Lon? Well, there's six letters here. Well, I do know just six. Here's a letter from the city of Muncie, Muncie, Indiana. Well, maybe the whole town's wanting a place like long. Yeah, it says, uh, gentlemen. Well. We have learned of your recently organized Pine Ridge Matrimonial Bureau and understand that you will solve domestic problems. Oh, this must be to our Matrimonial Bureau. Must be, yeah. I confide in you a very serious problem which is of much concern to our citizens. Uh Uh-huh. Granny's Abner, we are getting the importance when they get to writing us and wanting us to tell them how to run a whole city this way. Well, go ahead. <laughs> you never did find out what he wanted there. Yeah, it says, uh, Susan and Mickey, two of the bears in McCullough Park, have lived together for over two years in domestic bliss. Well. But recently, Suzanne seems to be losing interest in Mickey. Same old story, same old story. The question is, what can Mickey do to make his wife less irritable and restore harmony in his household? Yours very truly, William M. Hallman, Secretary. Doggy, they must be important people there, Lum, for the city to be writing about them. People? These is bears he's talking about. Bears? He says, Susan and Mickey, two of the bears in McCullough Park. Yeah, but he's talking there like they were humans, Lum. Well, the way I understand this is there's two of the bears in the park there in Muncie that ain't getting along as well as they are two, and they want us to try to figure out some way for them to make up. Yeah, well, I know about how Mickey feels. I saw Elizabeth when she was mighty nice cross as a bear. I thought bears went to sleep all during the winter time, sort of hibernated themselves. Went to sleep during the winter? Well, sure. Sleep all winter and stay up all summer. See, their nights is six months long. You mean they sleep for six months all at one time? They're supposed to. I dog as if one of them bears has a nightmare. I bound you he knows it the next day, won't you? <laughs> yeah. hey, I thought it was Eskimos that had night six months long all along. Well, they do. I reckon bears come from up in that sort of that country original, though. They've got fur all over them like Eskimos has, too, sort of. Yeah. Well, now, maybe that's the trouble with Susan. Mickey's been prowling around at night. You get to prowling around for six months at a time. Well, now, that's carrying things too far. Well, now, there's reason. Yeah, it'd be sort of funny to make you go out to the lodge or something about October or long in the fall and come sneaking in long about January, wouldn't it? Who ever <laughs> heard of a bear going out to the lodge? Well, I just said it'd be funny if he did. Mickey a night owl. <laughs> well, maybe he walks in his sleep, Lom. You know, that'd be reason enough for him not going to bed. That'd get awful tiresome walking for six months at a time. Well, this letter don't say nothing about him not sleeping good, Abner. No. Maybe he sleeps too good. Snores to where he keeps Susan awake. <laughs> I don't blame her for getting mad. Can you imagine anything worse than laying there and listening to somebody snore for six months at a time? <laughs> oh, now that would get awful tiresome, yeah. Yeah, if that's a trouble, I don't blame her for getting mad. Not a well, bit. They want us to make some kind of a suggestion. Yeah, that's, that's a serious problem. Get them to make up with one another. Oh, yeah. yeah. I want to figure out something he can do to get her back in a good humor. I've got two couples straightened out, you and Elizabeth, and Cedric and his sweetheart. I wasn't have no trouble with these bears. Well, now, don't go and try to get Mickey to make out like both his arms is broke. That's all right for the first day or so, but carrying your arms around in the sling till they're supposed to get well gets sort of old. Yeah, well, that wouldn't work out for him no way. No, I don't believe it would. I'll study up something. Let's see the rest of these letters here. Six months. I told you that'd be a long time to have to lay and listen to your wife argue about something. I'm just glad we don't sleep for six months at a time. Well, right swan to goodness. Huh? These letters is all for the matrimonial bureau. There ain't a one here writing in for a flashlight. Well, I do know. Well, you must not explain that to them very good over the party line yesterday, Long. I thought that's an uncommonly good speech, I Say, guess. Long, how about me call them up on the party line and tell them about it? You? Well, we got to do something if we're going to get a new stock of groceries for our store here. Yeah, but you can't make no speech, Abner. You don't know how to use enough big words. I'll call him up myself after a little. Yeah, I bet you I could get more letters than you did, Long. I couldn't do no worse than we've done today. I know that. Well, you about get everybody on the party line and forget what you're going to say. No, I'm just going to tell them that if they don't send in for these flashlights that we're wrong, that's all. Now, you better leave all the speech making up to me, Abner. Out loud talking disorder comes natural with me. It's an uh, inherit of it. Well, now, Long, I've got friends out on the party line just the same as you have, and I'll prove it to you, too, I go there. Uh, <laughs> I forgot, Mama. You'll have to do the ringing for me. Oh, for uh, give the fire alarm ring. That'll get them to the phone. 
All right, I'll ring them, but you just wasting your time. Nobody won't listen to your jabbering. Yeah, uh, you'll have to take the receiver off and the hook, too, while I'm holding it up to my ear. Here. Well, I may as well give the speech for you if I'm going to have to do everything else. Hey, no, I can hear them picking up a receiver. <laughs> well, go ahead and start your speech. Hello? Hello? They ain't going to answer you. Start talking. Oh, yeah. Hello? Tell them who you are. Uh, this is, uh, who? You ain't forgot your name, have you? No, but it ain't the Pine Ridge Matrimonial Bureau, and it ain't the Jot'em Down store. Now, who is it? Well, just tell them you're Abner Peabody. I'm Abner Peabody. Go ahead with the speech. I, I just want to tell all my friends that me and Lom is sending a dandy little pocket flashlight to all our friends that sends us their name wrote on the back of a wrapper from a bottle of Horlicks malted milk powder. Goodbye. That's a great speech. That's got appeals to it. I'll eat every letter you get in here on an offer like that. All right. <laughs> just recollect that. Every letter I get in off of that speech, you're going to eat it. <laughs> Well, Lum will know tomorrow how many friends Abner really has out on the party line. So send in for one of those handsome aluminum flashlights tonight, folks. Lum and Abner are going to send out a flashlight complete with bulb and batteries to every Horlicks malted milk user, you know. A handy little flashlight that's about the size of a fountain pen and can be easily carried in a pocket, but which is powerful and really useful. Now, every home can use a good flashlight. It would come in handy every day of the year. And here's all you have to do to get one. Send in the wrapper from a package any size of Horlick's malted milk powder. Must be Horlick's malted milk powder. Wrappers from Horlick's tablets are not eligible. Write your name and your address on the back of the wrapper and send it with 10 cents to cover mailing and packing charges to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. You got that? Then they will send you one of these fine pocket-sized flashlights, complete with bulb and batteries. Now, you'll all want one of these flashlights, folks. Send in for yours right away. You will not only be getting a useful article, you will be expressing your appreciation of Lum and Abner as well. And all of you will want to do that, I'm sure. If you don't happen to have a package of Horlicks in your home, you can get it in either natural or chocolate flavor at your druggist. This is Carlton Brickert, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick, who now bid you all good night and good health.